morning, Saturday, May the 24th, about 7 a.m. in the morning. I have this poor old motorcycle entered in a national show in less than 30 days, and I'm going to attempt to get it not restored, but to make it into a decent looking event so much. It really is kind of pathetic, this is just exactly the way I bought it. But it does have one really serious advantage over a lot of my previous projects. Let's do a quick walk around and hit some of the, shall we say, low points. We'll start with this very buggered up repair done to the rear brake lever by a previous owner. When they broke the end off of it, instead of getting a new one or repairing it, they just simply broke, bent the lever back. Everything else is just general abuse. Got a little two-stroke oil leak here somewhere. I'm not sure exactly where it's coming from, but I'll find that and fix that in the next week or two while I've got everything apart. It runs well. Most of the ugly is cosmetic. Believe it or not, I have actually washed this bike two or three times before starting this. But the dirt is just so deep and so gnarly. The key switch bracket is broken and has been wired to the handlebars. And just has a general overall air of neglect and abuse. The side covers are broken up, but I have two sets of them, and we'll probably be working to make one good set. Interesting note, this is the original factory plastic. It turns out that on this particular machine, the plastic is not blue all the way through. It is actually a gray plastic that is painted blue which is fine, I'm going to change the color. I'm not even shooting for any type of real restoration. I want it to be a decent looking light duty woods bike that I won't care if I beat it up or scratch it up once I get it back home. Got it up on the table now. My normal motorcycle lift is occupied with a long-term project. We're about to get started pulling off the cosmetics, pull off the seat, tanks, fenders, headlight shroud. Then the next step will be to pull out the oil tank, the air box, the engine, and then we'll take the wheels and the front forks and suspension apart.
seat like this, I would just order a cover and redo it myself, but the foam is damaged, so I'm actually going to take this one to a local upholstery shop. I'm not sure where these fuel lines came from. They're hard as a brick. I do have a new pet cock on it anyway to replace the one that's on it because it's stuck. And the spout was broken out of it also, but I GB welded it back in so I could ride the thing. have a new headlight bucket, a headlight trim ring to replace this one which is cracked and broken. And if you're wondering about these strange looking screwdrivers that I use here, this is a Hosan Japanese industrial standard screwdriver. It's different from a Phillips. These bikes do not use Phillips screws. They use JIS screws. These are available in my web store at motorcycle.com. And if you're working on an old Japanese motorcycle, you really should have a set. They're also available. Several brands available from Bessel and a couple of others. So if you don't have a set and you're working on old rice grinders, you need to get a set. Phillips screwdrivers just do not work correctly in these screws. Here's a little part that gets very interesting and I'm going to get a close-up of this. 
mainly so I will remember it. You notice the wiring harness comes from the bottom, comes up through the bracket, and then back into the instrument panel. I'm going to unplug all of that now and set it out the way. One very important thing when you're working on any motorcycle is always keep note of any spacers, standoffs, and washers that you find and how they are reassembled. This makes a lot of difference, especially when you're putting plastic bodywork panels back on, on whether or not they last or they break off or crack. If you put everything back in the right place, with all the rubber bushings and the proper spacers, especially these little washers here, that the spacers that are matched the thickness of your plastic panels, your plastic panels will last much longer. Now it's time to start removing the exhaust system. We'll start with this spring that is on the front of the head pipe attached to one of the fins of the head using either a pair of bent pliers or a spring hook tool. Remove the spring from the head pipe and from the head. I think I'll drop this in some rust remover. Next step is to remove the flange bolts. finish removing the expansion chamber now we have to get first to this bolt on this side of the frame care of getting that off. Well, there are about a thousand other small details to take care of and things to get removed, so let's get cracking. Like a battery box. Well, I've taken most of the side covers off the engine. Check the seals. Here you can see the oil pump and the lines going to it. And so far, except for the Kickstarter seal, I haven't seen anything that's actually leaking other than this. It appears this massive oil leak that I've been seeing is coming from this oil tank. It appears to be leaking around the sight glass. So we'll take that off and get that straightened out.
compared to what it was when I started this, May the 23rd of 2015. 